Hello and welcome back. It's another super practical one today and I'm going to talk to you about mood journaling. So first of all, what is mood journaling? So it's very simple. It's basically about keeping a track of your mood several times a day over several days or weeks in order to get a better understanding of the changes in your mood um, and what is triggering those changes. So it helps us to recognize where we have difficulties, it helps us to recognize triggers, and it also helps us to recognize what supports us in feeling better. Who is it for? It's for anyone who is experiencing any kind of emotional distress who wants to take some control over that and to feel better. So it might be that you're struggling with anger or anxiety, for example, um, and that you want to understand what's triggering those feelings and how can you begin to take a bit more control over that and regulate your emotions. You can do it yourself or you might be supporting someone who is struggling and you might use it then. You can use it with anyone of any age. You might just adapt the language language somewhat. How do you do it? Keeping a mood journal is really simple and you might try and motivate yourself or the person you're supporting by buying a pretty journal, that can really help, um, but equally you can just do it on a piece of paper. It can be really as simple as you want it to be. Now you think about how regularly you want to check in and check your mood um, and it can be useful to do that quite frequently. At first you might do it as often as every hour for example and you can either just take a note of how your mood is. I find doing that on a scale of 1 to 10 really helpful. So it might be where naught represents completely calm and 10 is very very anxious or it might be that you're thinking about a different feeling so it might be anger whatever is the different emotion that you're struggling with you would chart that on a scale of 1 to 10 with young children you might use something like emojis um, or different animals or colors you can use anything you like to make this feel accessible now it's useful if you can also note what's happening at that time what you've just been doing or what you're about to do um, and then also any other notes that feel relevant about how you're feeling and what's caused you to feel feel the way you're feeling, whether that is something that's made you feel um, kind of anxious or very, very low, for example, or whether it's something that's helped you to feel calm or happy. So we want to take notes of the positives and the negatives. Now you do this over a period of a week or so, and then you can, as I say, just do it in a journal, you can do it on a piece of paper, or you can create a form. So here's an example of one that I did recently. So this was for Attendance Matters magazine, and we created um, a mood journal for young people who were struggling to come to school so they were struggling with school refusal um, and you can see here that we made notes uh, we, we made space for them to know the time where they were who they were with what was happening then they ranked their current mood on a scale of 1 to 10 and then they put any extra notes needed but you can create your own you don't have to have it in a formalized way it's completely up to you what next? Okay, so you've kept your mood journal for a series of days, maybe a week, maybe more. What you need to do then is take time to reflect. Now, it might just be you reflecting, or it might be that you're supporting someone. Um, either way, have a look back over what's happened in the last few days and the last week, and take a note of the highs and the lows. So if you're using a scale, you're looking at where they were up towards the top, but then also when they were down towards the bottom. Now, you want to be able to try and understand if there are any patterns here. Are there certain times of day, certain places, certain people, certain activities which are making your mood either easier to manage or harder to manage? What was tipping you into anxiety or anger or sadness or whatever it might be? And But also, what was helping you to feel calm at other times? Look for the highs and lows and use that to help you to make a plan for how to manage next week. So it might be that you recognize that a certain time of day is always very difficult. Perhaps you find that lunchtime is really tricky because you have issues around food or perhaps you find that you have social anxiety around time when you need to be around other people. Perhaps you find the lack of structure at lunch lunchtime hard. There's lots of different reasons. But if you recognize that lunchtime is always a difficult time, and you see that in your mood journal, that each day that's a, a significantly difficult time, then you would think about, okay, how can I take some steps to manage lunchtime uh, in the next week? And you might get some inspiration of how to do that by looking at your mood journal and noticing that, oh, do you know what? I'm usually much calmer at about two o'clock, say, or when I'm with a certain person, or when I'm doing a certain thing. And you might try and recreate that feeling feeling at those difficult times. So it basically helps you to get a better understanding of what's happening with your mood, what's causing that, and how you can begin to manage it a bit better. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a comment below and let me know how you're using it. If you've got any ideas to add, please share those too. Always great to hear about how you're putting this into practice. Good luck and happy mood journaling.
Bye.